When I first tried the SC Trainer, I found its jumbo midsole to be a rare combination of squishy yet stable. But can a shoe this tall retain all that goodness in the long term? Let's talk about the SC Trainer after 100 miles. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kofuzia and I'm a non-elite runner who reviews shoes here on YouTube. And today I wanna to talk about the New Balance Super Comp Trainer, a 47 millimeter stack height shoe with racing foam and a carbon fiber plate. But before I go over how this shoe has held up over the last 100 miles that I've run in the shoe, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that New Balance sent to me for the purpose of review, so I did not have to pay for these shoes. However, they're not paying me to make this video or to use the shoe, and they're not gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the New Balance Super Comp trainer. Now for my long-term reviews, I'm not going to go in detail over the specs. I'll touch on some of the more pertinent ones as I go. And basically how I split it up is I talk about how I ended up using the shoe over the last hundred miles in case that's changed from beginning until now and how it's held up. And then at the end, I'll summarize with some pairing options and also some alternatives that you might want to consider if you're buying this shoe. Let's start off now though with how I've been using it. Now, I initially started off using the shoe, I think kind of more as intended or as advertised. I use it both for long runs, but also for some workouts as well. After all, it has New Balance's racing foam fuel cell and it also has a carbon fiber plate. So it seems like on paper, it should be kind of like an extra squishy racing type of shoe. But over the miles, I find myself using it less and less for speed work and more and more for just my easy days or long steady runs. The cushion in the back, which starts out at 47 millimeters of stack height with an eight millimeter drop, giving you 39 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot, makes for a very comfortable ride. But I also feel like the way that they position the plate in the forefoot made it feel like it wasn't a shoe that had like a jumbo amount of squishiness in that forefoot, even though there is kind of a jumbo amount of squishiness in the heel. So for me as a midfoot forefoot striker, I found that like it didn't feel like extra, extra tall when I really wanted to get up on my toes. I only felt like I was getting the benefits of all the stack height and it was only worth carrying all the weight when I was a little bit more relaxed, landing a little bit more midfoot and even doing a little bit of heel striking for those longer, just steady effort runs rather than anything that's at 5K type of pace. But regardless of the pace that I was using it, I did find that it was stable throughout my testing of this shoe. And I think that a large part has to do with the plate position. It kind of starts out very high in the shoe and then scoops down low and gets very close to the ground in the forefoot. And what that does is it lends itself to being a very stable kind of landing and toe off position. So even though there is a lot of foam underfoot, uh, it doesn't squish in too wobbly of a way that low position carbon fiber plate tends to kind of even things out and prevent things from getting too squirrely. Now, I think that if you are a midfoot or heel striker, you're probably gonna get a little bit more versatility out of the shoe than I did. But for anyone who has a foot strike that's more like mine, that's more forefoot than it is heel striking, I feel like you're probably only going to like it like I did, which is for those longer easy runs or longer steady state runs where you're moving maybe marathon pace or just a little bit slower than that. All right, now let's talk about how it's held up over the course of the miles now that I've told you how I've been using it. And I feel overall it's held up very well. It still feels very squishy in the heel and it still feels nice and stable no matter kind of how my foot is landing in the forefoot. Looking at the rubber on the outsole, I also think that that's holding up really well. It doesn't really look to me like a 100 mile shoe when I'm looking at the rubber wear. There's a couple of spots which are my highest wear areas, mainly in the pads of the foot and on the lateral sides back towards the heel where I could see a little bit of wear, but it's nothing unusual, it's nothing accelerated, and I'm very happy with how the rubber has held up. The one area where I feel like I'm a little bit disappointed in how the shoe is holding up though is in some of the kind of exposed area of foam. Now, 
in the forefoot of this shoe, there's kind of like this space in between where the rubber is and where the kind of like the cutout for the window to the carbon fiber plate is. And there you can really see along this little border that it's really looking pretty chewed up and kind of nasty. It kind of looks shriveled in a way. And I think really all that's happening is that like little rocks or pebbles are kind of like denting and chewing at that foam and creating little indentations. And so I think that ultimately it's not doing too much in terms of degrading the foam experience for me. It just looks really nasty. And the other thing that I've noticed is it seems like the exposed foam seems to be kind of depressed, like pushed up into the shoe just a little bit. And so I'm not sure that I was able to really capture what that looked like on camera, but like looking at it, I feel like it's kind of like indented a little bit more than it originally was uh, when the shoe was a little bit newer and over time I feel like just there's just something about it where it's not quite holding up its shape over time. Again, I still feel like it's a really fun shoe to run in. I'm just worried that it's degrading a little bit faster than I'd like. So let's summarize my thoughts on the shoe after 100 miles. I feel like the Super Comp Trainer is best for long steady runs or if you are a midfoot slash heel striker, I feel like you might be able to get a little bit more versatility out of it and be able to enjoy the carbon fiber plate for some workouts as well. But remember, it is still a pretty big shoe, so it's not gonna be the kind of shoe that you're necessarily wanting to bring to the track or run some of your fastest intervals. Now, if you are looking at putting the shoe into your rotation, I think a couple of shoes that it pairs well with would be from the New Balance line itself. I feel like New Balance has a really well-developed entire line for like 22 slash 2023. Uh, and so the first shoe that I would look at is from the racing side is the shoe sibling. It's the SC Elite version three. They both kind of have the same thing going on after hundred miles underfoot in terms of like that four foot area exposed foam looks a little bit rough, but these shoes are both really fun to run in. I've been using the SC Trainer as that long steady run shoe. And when I need to pick up the pace and run threshold mile repeats or run marathon effort miles in my long run, that's when I've been reaching for the SC Elite version three. I also ran the New York City Marathon in this and had a really great time loving the comfort of the upper. Now, if you want a daily trainer, something where you might do maybe like some of your easy work, maybe some workouts that have some strides in it, then I feel like the daily trainer that you should look at is the New Balance Rebel version three. Now, all these three shoes that I've talked about have that fuel cell foam in here. Now this one just has it in a much lower stack height configuration and without a plate. So you're really getting all the benefit of that nice squishy fuel cell foam. A lot of the similar design cues, so they all look really nice and they're all very comfortable in terms of the uppers. I feel like New Balance in this last year has done a really great job dialing in that fit. And I feel like this is a really great daily trainer companion for those shorter, faster days when you're gonna also use the SC Trainer for those longer steady runs. Now, let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe. It's still at 180 in terms of the retail price on the website. I really haven't been able to find it anywhere else at a discounted price in that, and that really feels like a lot. You are getting a lot of racing level foam. You are getting a carbon fiber plate, so there's a lot to this shoe, but I do feel like it just feels like it's kind of on the expensive side. 180 is just, for me, that's kind of like racing shoe territory or very near racing shoe territory. So I don't love the 180 price point, but let's take a look at some of the competition. I think the shoe that this lines up the best with, at least in terms of the way that I'm using it and enjoying it, is gonna be the Super Blast from Asics. Now this is also a shoe that's primarily racing foam with its FF Turbo, but it doesn't have a plate, but instead uses a daily training foam, FF Blast Plus, underneath it to give you kind of like a race-like sensation, but just a little bit dialed back, maybe use it for more of your long runs, steady state kind of stuff. I really like it for marathon pace effort work. I raced CIM in this last year. I thought it was a pretty good shoe to be able to do that in. Now, both of these shoes, I think I use very similarly, although I think I'd rather pick up the pace just a little bit more in the Super Blast, and I'd rather go a little bit more relaxed in the SC Trainer, and that's kind of how I would differentiate these two shoes. But I think for a lot of people, you're using both of these shoes very similarly. The Super Blast did go a price reduction, but it's still at 200 bucks, which is $20 more, even more than the 180 of the SC Trainer. I think both of these shoes are still kind of a little bit expensive for what you're paying for, but I do feel like that's kind of a sense of the market. Now, 
I do think I can find you a cheaper alternative to the SE Trainer if the 180 is too much for you. And that's also gonna be from New Balance and that's gonna be the Fresh Foam More version four. Also a very tall shoe, very comfortable to run in. And I've been using both of these New Balance shoes very similar for long, steady days. I think that the SE Trainer is more eager to pick up the pace if you need something that's gonna be a little bit more versatile than the Fresh Foam More version four is. They're different foams. The Fuel Cell Foam is like kind of racing and performance Fresh Foam More is more kind of like your everyday trainer type of foam that you're using. And so like this one's a little bit more relaxed, recovery day kind of shoe. And the SE Trainer is a little bit more ready to pick up the pace. I saw a lot of people racing in this shoe over the past couple of marathons. So I feel like there are differences, but again, I feel like I would use both of these shoes very similarly. And the Fresh Foam More version four, I believe is $150. So that's quite a bit cheaper than the 180. So I feel like if they made the More version four 150, which is a price that I like, and the SE Trainer like 160, 165, that would make me much happier. 180 is still a lot, but it also is a pretty fun shoe to run in. So those are my thoughts on a super comp trainer after 100 miles. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do over on the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I will see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?